Now out on Blu-ray from Dark Force Entertainment is another in the series of Dark Force Drive-In Double Feature Blu-rays. This is number 18 in that series, and this is a double feature of two films from the 70s, two uh, sort of drive-in kind of movies from the 70s. We have The Weekend Murders from 1970, and we have Whose Child Am I from 1976. This was really interesting. Okay, I've heard about Dark Force Entertainment for years. I never really bought a lot of Dark Force Entertainment titles because... They're not cheap, they're well done. They're just not cheap, and I am. So I'm always a little picky about what I buy, and Dark Force tends to do, which I like, they tend to do much deeper cuts. They do film titles that people, most people haven't heard of, but if you're like me and you love movies of the 60s and 70s, I think they traffic mostly in the 70s into the 80s, but they, they, they kind of run the gamut back and forth for decades. If, you, if you're like me and you love weird old cult obscure horror sleaze movies, and you've seen all the big titles, it's always exciting to sort of discover new old movies, as it were, and that's what this double feature set does. So uh, I'll talk to about these in the order that I watched them. This does offer a, uh, what do they call it, a Dark Force drive-in mode, a special drive-in mode. I mean, I've, I've got the disc right here. This has got, uh, let's see, do, do, do dark, yeah, dark Force drive-in mode that basically will play one film and then you'll get previews of coming attractions, a couple of vintage trailers, and then you will get an intermission reel, and then our feature presentation, and the next movie will play. So you can watch it as a nonstop drive-in double feature, or you can watch the movies individually. So I did it a little bit wrong when I watched it with the Dark Force drive-in mode, is because I watched Weekend Murders first, and then I went back to watch the uh, Whose Child Am I, and the way it's listed on the Blu-ray menu is Whose Child Am I, Weekend Murders, and under that it says play in drive-in mode. The drive-in mode starts with Weekend Murders, plays through all the other stuff, and then plays Whose Child Am I. So at any rate, it, it works. It's just, it's a little confusing based on how it's laid out in the menu. So uh, let's go through them in the order that I watched them. So Weekend Murders from 1970. This is, you can't, it's an Italian murder mystery set in England, shot, I think, in England with some British cast members. So you really kind of want to call this a giallo because it's somebody who's killing people off one by one, but it's really much more an Agatha Christie riff or spoof. It's kind of light in tone. The overall idea is that a bunch of people go to a, an English estate, family members go to an English estate for the reading of a will. The will is read and people start getting bumped off. Or maybe it's even before the, the will is read. The joke in this and the joke on the poster was, you, you know the butler didn't do it because he dies first. So one by one, members of this family are getting bumped off. There's a British constable, police inspector, and his assistant, a Bobby, who's kind of goofy, who are there. The police inspector is played by a British a comedic actor that I recognize. The Bobby is from an Italian actor who's been in a lot of things. Um, Giacomo Rossi Stewart is in this, who you would probably recognize from a lot of things, including Baba's uh, Kill Baby Kill, and uh, in another film I'll be reviewing very soon. And uh, it's it's a mix of familiar Italian faces, but no like really big names. And it's it was fine. The transfer is gorgeous. It's really wild watching Weekend Murders and seeing it open with the MGM logo because that was distributed by MGM in this country. But it feels like this odd, weird. I wouldn't say exploitation, but it, it feels like a, a not, uh, what's the word, a prestigious film. Now, MGM re released a lot of goofy stuff. They released Wicked Wicked. They did horror movies. They did black exploitation. MGM wasn't above, you know, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with AIP and stuff like that. But this movie just felt like the, not like the kind of thing that MGM would release. But I thought it was fine. I didn't love it. But it's, uh, it's like, as I say, it's light in tone, so it breezes right along. It, the transfer is beautiful. It looks great gorgeous. It looks so good. And uh, it's got some familiar faces and sort of a giallo-esque take on, uh, on, I wanted to say, Anne Murray. Agatha Christie. Similar, right? And uh, so that's, that's cool. Whose Child Am I is really interesting. So Whose Child Am I is from 1976. It has Kate uh, O'Mara and what's his name? Paul Freeman. Not to be confused with Paul Freeze. This Paul Freeman you will know as Belloc from Raiders of the Lost Ark. So like five or so years after this movie, he's playing in Raiders of the Lost Ark as the villain. If you ever wanted to see Belloc naked, what a weird thing to ask somebody. If you ever wanted to see Belloc naked, Whose Child of Mine is the film for you? Because it opens with Belloc buttocks. 
it is, it is, I keep wanting to call him Belloc. It's Paul Freeman and Kate O'Mara just rolling in the hay, rolling in the hay. And we establish early on in this film that they have marital problems and she wants a baby or they both want a baby, but they, they can't conceive. So this film is this weird mix of sexploitation movie because there's a lot of nudity and rutting in it, but not, not wildly explicit, but it's there. And this weird, heavy, artificial insemination drama. So if you ever wanted to see Belloc's buttocks in an artificial insemination drama, Whose Child of Mine is the film for you and Dark Force Entertainment has made those dreams come true. So the film is basically how they go to fertilization doctors and in vitro doesn't work. And then they go to the idea of a surrogate and that's causing strife within the, in the relationship, within the marriage. And Kate O'Mara, the, the, the wife or the, the female, she goes off to meet with this guy in a, in a clinic to just to, to take care of a little business and she can't do it. And the guy's like, well, if you're uncomfortable here, maybe you could come back to my place. And she thinks it's a terrible idea. Later, I'm not gonna tell you the whole story, Later, she takes him up on the idea, and then she takes him up on the idea regularly. So it, it's it's really this this heavy drama about this couple trying to conceive and and sort of infidelity, and this this guy who's very happy to provide, and it gets a little bit more complicated. It winds up with a, it as a courtroom drama at the end, and uh, just an odd film. It's the kind of movie where you're like. Did the raincoat crowd, the Mac, they, was, they say in England, the Macintosh crowd, would they want to watch all that drama to get to the nudity? And would the people who are going for the drama, the people who are passionate about it in artificial insemination drama, do they want to sit through all the nudity and rutting? I don't know. It's probably why this film is very rare and, and near lost. So those are the two films. There's a few extras. You have a commentary on The Weekend Murders by one of the stars of the film, Peter Baldwin. You have an interview with Peter Baldwin that's about 15 minutes long. And both of them, the interview focuses a little bit more on Weekend Murders. The commentary, uh, which also is moderated by one of the moderators, is Scott Spiegel, who's one of the guys who worked with Sam Raimi on the Evil Dead movies, original Evil Dead movies. Uh, it's mostly a career overview with Peter Baldwin, but he has a lot of interesting stories. Now, he's an actor that I had never heard of, but he's done a lot of things. And he worked with all kinds of people you'd know, like really prominent people in the U.S. and overseas. So it's a really lively, fun commentary, even if it doesn't really touch on the movie that you're commenta uh, theoretically commentating, comment commenting on all that much. Um, you have the, uh, the that demon drive-in mode. Some of the stuff in that is of rather poor quality. It's kind of clearly to me just pulled off YouTube, a lot of the in drive and intermission stuff. So sometimes you get, you know, pixelation and motion artifacts and all that, which to me kind of take me out of it. Uh, a beat up, a good transfer of beat up film print to me is preferable that to than just taking stuff off YouTube that just looks jaggedy and blocky and it just looks like I'm watching bad internet video. Um, overall though, this is a really fun set. Not great movies by any stretch of the imagination, which I th is a lot of times what Dark Force traffic's in, which is cool. It's okay that they're not putting out the uber classics. Those are taken care of by other people. It's great to me that there are HD versions of these really obscure films that maybe somebody saw years ago and remembers, or maybe some of us like us just love seeing movies from that era that we've never seen before and, and like them looking good. Uh, Weekend Murders, as I said, looks beautiful. Whose Child Am I? It's got scratches and a few splices here and there. It looks like you're going to see this movie at a drive-in after it's been making the rounds for a while and it's like, you know, second or third on the bill, which is absolutely fine with me. Uh, let me show you the packaging. So I'm not gonna, we, we have a slip case, first of all, which has uh, sort of replica graphics for the films. There's Whose Child Am I? And on the back side, as it were, uh, we have Weekend Murders, which is kind of, it's just fun original artwork or replica original artwork. And then similarly, the uh, case itself, I love that they do this. They take old ad mats and they replicate what it might've looked like in a newspaper advertising these things. So you get to that for the two movies and then you get your write up on the back. And the disc itself is again, just uh, similar to that. So the no, no, no booklets, tuck-ins, mini posters, lobby cards or anything like that, but it's pretty good. And uh, I, will, I will read from the back of the box here, so pardon my brow. Uh, Weekend Murders is a brand new HD master from the original US CRI with extensive restoration and color correction in scope. Whose Child of Maya is a brand new 2K master from the only known 35 millimeter, they say drive-in print, which if you're in the know means it's not gonna be in perfect shape. 
only known drive-in print with color correction, and the Dark Force uh, drive-in mode has four horror movie trailers. So uh, 235185, this is an all-region disc, so if you pick this up, as I like to say, if you're watching this in Bratislava and you really, really want to see Who's Child by, if you're watching this in Bolivia and you're like, I just got to see Belloc's buttocks, this will play on your player. So available now from Dark Force Entertainment is a number 18 in their, their drive-in double feature series, Whose Child Am I and The Weekend Murders.